Hello, everyone. I want to, uh, first of all, thank you all for honoring me with uh, joining this webinar. I know that we've got a bunch of people online live now, and there'll be lots more people listening to the recorded session later on. We're going to talk a bit about IoT, the Internet of Things today, and we're going to try to get a better understanding for that. One of the things that I'm known for is helping people that are new to a topic to understand it better. So I'm hoping to explain this in terms that will be easy for you to understand and easy for you to get a, at least an early understanding of what the subject is about. I try to do that with all of my webinars. You can take a look at my page at The Great IT Professional and see some of the other webinars that I presented on AI and other subjects. So let's talk about IoT. What is IoT? Let's start out there understanding what Internet of Things is. Well, it's a pretty uh, self-explanatory title, I guess you'd say, that uh, Internet of Things, it's things that are connected on the Internet. I mean, that's the basic understanding of what it is. Uh, you can look around and see all different kinds of explanations of what it is, and some people think that certain things are not really included in that, and others are, and this type of thing. But basically what we're talking about is connecting things together, right? What kind of things do we connect together? Well, gee whiz, the sky's the limit. Uh, if you went out and took a look on the internet to find out what kind of things are connected to the internet, you would be surprised at all the different things that are connected. And I'll go through a couple of stories to tell you a few things that I've heard about that have been connected to the internet. You know, my story with the internet of things starts a bunch of years ago. I had worked uh, actually when I was in college back in the day I had worked on using microprocessors to do things, and some of us started a little hobbyist group that we'd work with uh, some microprocessors doing things, and that's when they were first starting to become big, and the first uh, home computers were starting to, to, to be made and manufactured that you could buy them for your home, and you know the first IBM PC and that type of thing. It was exciting times to learn about these things, and I had worked at a big company, oh, this is maybe about oh, I don't know, five to ten years ago now, and found out that they had an IoT group, and they were working with small uh, microprocessors or microcomputers here uh, to do all types of things with the Internet of Things. And I got interested in the group. And because I'm a project manager, one of the things that I noticed was that, you know, they had some great technical leaders that, that knew a lot about the subject of IoT and were applying it, and some of them were involved in the IoT business unit within that organization, and some of them were hobbyists uh, working with IoT, and they had some great projects that they were working on, uh, both for industry, but then also on the hobbyist side. And I got interested in it because of my past experience working with small computers and the like, and I thought, you know, gee, you know, as a project manager, I could probably bring some organization to this group to help them out, you know, to plan meetings so that they could... Uh, share their stories with each other and the projects that they were working on and help each other out and that type of thing. So uh, that's what I did. I, I offered my services. I volunteered for the group. And it was kind of a grassroots group of people that were all just getting together on a regular basis, having fun, sharing ideas, and helping each other out. And I started to plan these meetings uh, for the Internet of Things group. And after a while, I was like so interested. I was like, wow. I would like to do a project using using the Internet of Things, you know, and I asked one of the people in the group that had done some presentations, I said, you know, what would I do if I wanted to try this out? And he sent me basically a parts list. He said, you know, order these processors uh, from this organization and order some lights and some resistors and things like this, some switches and stuff. And I ordered these different parts and, you know, it took a while for them to come. And when they did, you know, I asked some questions and, you know, they showed me how to uh, connect it uh, in my computer, how I can write little programs and make these lights flash and stuff. It was very exciting time to learn that. But then I decided, you know, gee, gee, I wanted to do something that was going to be a value, right? I you know, now that I played around with it a little bit, you know, what could I do of value? Well, it ended up that uh, somebody that I knew had a uh, cabin that was located in a very cool region of the country. And, uh, you know, they were only there mostly on weekends and stuff. And I got to talking to them and they were, you know, one of the things that I was concerned about was, you know, what would happen if 
your furnace didn't work in the winter time and your pipes all froze and you came the next weekend and found water leaking all over the place and the place flooded because of pipe burst because it froze and i said to them you know um some of what i've been doing with the internet of things is you know being able to like measure temperature you know and i said how about if i created a smart uh, iot device for you that um you know would help you to know if it got too cold like if the furnace broke down or something you know and i talked to this person and and he was like, yeah, that's a good idea. And we kind of talked a little bit about requirements, you know, requirements gathering and, you know, what were we going to have to do and how would it work and that type of thing. And we decided that it would be best if it could send a message to his cell phone if the temperature went below a certain level. And then he'd know he'd then need to get in the car and go up to this cabin and figure out what's going on with the furnace, whether it broke down or something or power was out or something like this. Right. So. Uh, we had some, I guess you'd say, loosely defined requirements, which seems to be the case in a lot of things today, that we get loosely defined requirements. And I, I put this together, and I found the parts that I needed to do it. So uh, here, let me just go to the next slide and show you. Um, and instead of going to the next slide, I made it bigger. Okay, on the next slide here. And here's a picture of a little device that I made. Uh, it is built on an Arduino. It's called an Arduino, which is a little single board computer that has kind of revolutionized the industry. Uh, the people that put this Arduino together wanted to do this so that people could have a computer for a very low cost. And um, this actually is two boards. It's an Arduino, and some people call this a hat that's on top of it. Uh, the board that's on the top plugs into the board below it. The, bo the bottom board is the Arduino. And the the top board is this hat, as we can call it. And this this hat, in this case, that you put on top, and that's why they call it a hat, because you put it on top of the other board, allows you to connect to the Internet. So you can see a standard Internet connection there uh, on the left-hand side there connecting. So it allowed me to connect this to the Internet. And the uh, black connector below that is actually the the uh, cord that's used for, you know, you could use that for sending data, but you also use that for powering the board and that type of thing. And you can see some jumpers between the boards there and stuff. And, and over on the left-hand corner here, uh, that is actually uh, that little black thing. And let me see if I can annotate that. Uh, this little black thing over here. Uh, nope, that's not the, I got to get the right wand here to, to do this. That's not the one either. Let me see if I can find it. Pointer. Okay, so this little device right here, and I notice that's not showing up for some reason. But anyway, this device that's over here on the side, uh, this little thing, is a temperature sensor. That little tiny sensor is a temperature sensor, and that's kind of the heart of this device, if you want to say, as far as measuring is concerned. That little, th this little uh, temperature sensor here is what's used to get the temperature. And then that feeds into this unit and it goes into the computer. Hi there. I hope you enjoyed that last clip. My name is Michael Maloudis, and if you'd like to watch the full 60 minutes of that last webcast, while also gaining complete unlimited access to our entire library of IT learning, simply visit our subscribe page at greatpro.org slash subscribe. Unlimited annual access is $199 per year. But if you use the coupon code learn to earn you can drop that membership fee to just $149. That's less than $13 per month for unlimited access to over 1,000 hours of on-demand career development, covering the entire spectrum of IT management best practices, including business analysis and requirements, software development, quality and testing, risk management, process improvement, project management, and even digital transformation. But your membership doesn't just give you unlimited access to our vast learning library. You also get free access to our mobile app, as well as direct access to our network of over 300 of the world's leading IT consultants, all of whom are dedicated to putting practical knowledge at your fingertips so that you can learn more and earn more. I hope you will join me in becoming a member of the great IT professional and advancing your career with us. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button above so that you get notified whenever we publish new free webcasts each week of the year. Thank you for your time and best wishes for your continued success.